Conservative leader Pierre Polyev has unleashed a brutal attack on Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland in the House of Commons. Polyev ruthlessly criticized her over her failed economic policies, leaving Freeland scrambling to respond, quite literally reduced to having a tantrum in Parliament. Polyev went after Freeland for sticking with Trudeau's crazy carbon tax, saying it was just cruel to hit struggling families with a hike when they're already dealing with high costs. Freeland was basically left speechless after Polyev's fact-based attacks and refused to acknowledge the tax's damage. Polyev was just being the voice of many hopeless Canadians after Freeland's one failed policy after another that many Canadians now believe are purposely made to further hurt Canadians. The concerning question here, how can Freeland master being the worst reputed minister under Trudeau's liberal government? Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we start today's video, take a quick second to subscribe to our US-based channel, Street Politics USA, where we report daily uncensored US news and how the unfolding political landscape can impact Canada. You can find the link in the description below. Conservative leader Pierre Polyev's brutal attack on Freeland sent shockwaves across the House of Commons. It was another bold move from the conservative leader, who once again took the fight directly to Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland. Polyev brutally criticized her over the government's failed policies, leaving Freeland scrambling to respond. Polyev immediately tore into Freeland of the carbon tax. He pointed out how cruel it was to impose a 23% hike on struggling Canadian families already dealing with high food and energy costs. With 2 million Canadians visiting food banks each month and military families in Gagetown being forced to rely on donations just to eat, hiking the carbon tax was unconscionable. While common sense conservatives are fighting to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime, this Prime Minister is promising a cruel April Fool's Day joke, a 23% carbon tax hike on food, gas, and groceries. This at a time when the Prime Minister has forced 50 families in at CFB at Gagetown, military families, to go to food banks. Two million Canadians every month going to those same food banks, 8,000 as part of a Facebook group where they share tips on eating out of dumpsters. Insane. Will the Prime Minister gain some compassion and some common sense and spike the hike? Yeah. The Honourable Deputy Freeland tried to defend herself by making partisan attacks, claiming the Conservatives only want to take away benefits from Canadians. But Polyev wasn't having any of it. He kept up his criticism by forcing Freeland to defend how the average family will be forced to pay more money each year because of the carbon tax increase. Fear and falsehoods to distract from the fact that after eight years of this Prime Minister, he's not worth the cost, and neither is his carbon tax, which will cost the average Ontario family this coming year $1,674. $1,674 for a middle-class family that's lined up at a food bank, not able to feed themselves or pay their heating bill. Will the Prime Minister give his head a shake, cancel his cruel April Fool's Day joke, and spike the hike? Yeah. A flustered Freeland could only repeat weak talking points about the carbon tax rebate, refusing to admit how the tax would leave families worse off. Her feeble arguments were no match for Polyev's rapid-fire critiques. Every time she tried to defend herself, Polyev had another fact or number ready to rebut her. The exchange showed the clear contrast between the two. Polyev was sharp, focused, and armed with data. Freeland came across as evasive and lacking understanding or care for the daily struggles of regular Canadians. Her repeated attempts to change the subject showed she had no effective response to the criticism about the carbon tax. So he, she, she just brags that Alberta families will get $1,800, but according to the parliamentary budget officer, the carbon tax will cost Alberta families $2,943. She take the Prime Minister takes away $2,943 and gives back $1,800. Madam uh, Mr. Speaker, it's almost like he's a bank robber who thinks that he's virtuous because he tips the teller on the way out the door. Why won't he oh! Other Conservative MPs soon started criticizing Freeland about issues like the increasing use of food banks in Toronto, rising inflation, and housing becoming unaffordable. Each of their pointed questions backed Freeland further into a corner, forcing her to come up with even more nonsensical defenses of the Liberals' record. Freeland's track record of overspending has driven Polyev to be a voice for all Canadians. With the Trudeau government set to deliver yet another late budget after the fiscal year has already started, Polyev and many Canadians are rightfully worried about what new unaffordable spending ideas Freeland has planned. 
This blatant disregard for basic budget discipline shows an arrogance and sense of entitlement that has come to define the liberal government. Since taking over as finance minister, Freeland's record has been a case study in wasted opportunities and mismanagement. Despite repeatedly claiming the government respects fiscal anchors, the evidence shows spending under Freeland has continued growing without control. Just a few months ago, her fiscal update dramatically underestimated the size of this year's deficit by nearly $7 billion. Even the parliamentary budget officer, who is typically generous in assessing the Liberals' fiscal promises, has called out Freeland's lack of spending restraint. Yet she continues rapidly pushing ahead with her planned massive pharmacare expansion, ignoring the fiscal implications. With interest costs now the government's fourth largest expense, Freeland can no longer disregard the consequences of her reckless borrowing. After years of very low rates, her excessive borrowing has left Canada exposed now that rates are rising quickly. Interest charges are completely crowding out other priorities. As the military requests recruitment help, Freeland admits no new funding is available. But she always manages to find new programs to announce like her recent tax break for beer drinkers. Her management of finances has been equally ineffective for the economy. Despite claiming to support the middle class, incomes have stayed flat under the Liberals' watch. Inflation has eroded savings while wages fail to keep up. Canadians find costs skyrocketing for basics like groceries, gas, and housing. Yet Freeland continues insisting her policies are working, doubling down on damaging ideas like higher carbon taxes. She is dismissive of evidence showing these taxes disproportionately hurt the most vulnerable. At one point, an exasperated Freeland made an absurd claim that higher taxes make people richer demonstrates her economic incompetence and lack of comprehension. It's no wonder Canada is in such fiscal turmoil with that kind of thinking. Mr. Speaker, Canadians can see through these Conservatives, and they know that the only thing these Conservatives know how to do is cut, 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 and the people who suffer the most are the most vulnerable. They want to cut the Canada Child Benefit. They do not support dental care, which is helping the most vulnerable among us. They do not support early learning and child care, which is helping make life more affordable for Canadian families. They are going to push, they want to push Canadians into poverty. We won't let them. At the end of question period, one thing was clear. Polyev had once again completely outmatched his liberal opponent. Freeland was left looking weak and unable to defend her government's terrible track record. Her poor performance will likely raise even more doubts about the already shaky liberal chances in the next election. Also, average Canadians are really feeling the negative impacts of finance minister Christia Freeland's poor management of the economy. Years of overspending and uncontrolled deficits have led to skyrocketing inflation, housing prices that have become unaffordable, and paychecks not keeping up. The result is a growing feeling of desperation and hopelessness among regular citizens. This despair can be seen in the huge crowds at recent job fairs where thousands of people show up competing for just a handful of jobs. The viral videos of these anxious crowds show the human cost of the liberal government's mismanagement. Freeland's policies have weakened job creation and made the job market extremely competitive. For many people, these job fairs represent their only opportunity amid the increasing costs of daily life. But with so few jobs available, most will leave disappointed with their hopes shattered. The obvious unhappiness in those lines shows how the Liberals' mismanagement of the economy has put citizens in a desperate situation. Record inflation along with tiny wage growth has created huge pressure. And as dreams of owning a home disappear and grocery bills eat up entire paychecks, people are reaching their breaking point. When skilled workers are reduced to desperately competing for warehouse and service jobs, it signals something is very wrong. After years of liberal mistakes, the middle class is barely surviving. Canadians are struggling under the burden of liberal mismanagement. Inflation is eroding incomes, while taxes and fees continue to rise. Basic necessities like groceries, gas, and housing grow more unaffordable by the day. Clearly, the liberal approach is not working. As the question period ended, the consensus was clear. Freeland and her government colleagues are simply not up to the task. After eight years of liberal rule, the economy is weaker, the society more divided, and the future more uncertain. 
Polyev's masterful takedown of Freeland showed the liberals' mispriorities and failed leadership. Well, that's all for now. When will Freeland stop her out-of-control taxing and spending spree as bankrupting Canada? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.